having to start a car business and um, having to literally drink that business away. Yeah. Right. Now, we've, we've, we've had your whole growing up foundation. And I like what you said about the seed that was planted and now in the streets. Where was the turning point? Where did you get back into church? So we, we, we start talking about ministry. Where did you... Where, where was the turning point? Where did you make the, the direction again back to church? Now, let me ask you, did you sense the call? At what point did you sense the call? Before you, be, at a younger age, whilst you're still in high school or when you were in the streets? Or at what point did this? I sensed the call quite early, okay. but I got the confirmation immediately now I get born again. So we are talking about immediately after high school, I sensed the call. Okay. So... Um, so, you, so at that stage, you already knew the call was there. Then you, yes. you got into the streets. Okay, what was the turning point? At what point did you come back and you say, you know what, this is it? So, I feel like I, after a while, I realized one, I'm wasting away. Okay. That was bad. It felt, and then, secondly, I would see the people that we, the people that were my friends, have advanced, and then I felt like I had blown most of my opportunities. Mm. Uh, you know, there are two, you know, people are different that they say, no, I've not had opportunities. I feel my life, I've had plenty of opportunities, but I blew my opportunities away. Yeah. So I blew my opportunity. So I felt like I had failed a lot. I was tired of failure, basically. I was tired of messing up. I was tired of nobody would trust me with money. Nobody would believe I would keep, you know, yeah. everybody's... Everybody, my parents, you know, everybody, my cousins, everybody was like, no, Dennis, you can't trust him. All he does is drink. So I had just gotten a bad name. Wow. It was too bad. And so I just got tired of it. And I got tired of it because when I remember the season when I was fully tired of it, I also was in a relationship that I was getting married to. Okay. But by this time, I'm doing car hire. And the worst thing is that I'm driving high, getting home. Hi, I don't know how I got home, but I drove the car home. Wow. So by now I'm risking my life and I did that. So more than once I would wake up in the morning and I know the car got home. I know I got home. The car doesn't have a scratch, but you know I got home. So I'm carrying this girlfriend of mine driving home. And as I'm driving home, uh, it's a manual car and I'm high. I can't remember my way. I'm, I'm just going home and she's not as high as me but she's helping me stay on the road. So she's driving with me, you know, returning the car to the road. So we wake up in the morning and she's extremely mad. She says, you should have killed us yesterday. And I'm like, but we got home. <laughs> you know, that's the most important thing. So, uh, so at the end of the day, we just had, a, a, you know, she just was like, and, and for me, I was convinced this girl I was going to marry her. And then she tells me, she was a good girl. She tells me, I, I can't do this. You're very irresponsible. Oh. I think that hits me differently. It says, you can't even buy yourself clothes. You're making money. So that hit me deep. So what do I do? I began my change. That is 2020. Mm -hmm. So I began coming back now fully. Yeah. On 30, in December 2010, going to 2011, someone gave me money to do car hire. And they pay, They gave me money after I did car hire. And then I went to the club and drank it on 31st, 1st and 2nd. It was not my money. Wow. So the day I got sober on 3rd, I decided I'm starting a 21 day and prayer and fasting. So that's the time I started. Wow. And for 21 days, I prayed straight one prayer. Lord, save me, keep me or kill me. Keep me or kill me. And, and it, it look it, it, like it now looking back, I'm like I should have had a better prayer point. But it was Lord keep me. Lord. I think it was from from a sense of desperation. Yes, I was so desperate because this relationship was so bad. So that is the first time when it ended. It was the first time I felt like I should kill myself. I actually remember getting on a motorbike, trying and telling a guy to to take a particular direction so that I would jump with my head and hit my head on the highway so that it would burst and then I would die without feeling a lot of pain you get yeah. so 
but now my prayer was like okay lord save, keep me or, or save uh, keep me or kill me and i prayed it for 21 days by the time 21 days was done the heartbreak was done the appetite was gone until today until forever that's i've miracle. never had the appetite that's that's a miracle that's a miracle so so that's that's now how my change began right so um What's what's what, what was it like for you answering the call? How's your now at that point you know you were called? Did you get into the ministry immediately? So at this time, by the time it gets to 2010, um, I'm I'm serving. Uh, there's a man of God I was serving in and out. So he would see me disappear, maybe like four months and then come back. Yeah. So so when we get to 2010. There's a, even a time I served a whole year consistently, consistently, yes. and then six months I'm gone. So there's no in, there's, there's no stability. stability yeah. So that is now from two or nine now uh, to from two or eight going to two or nine now. Everything is unstable. I'm just trying to get a footing. So I couldn't get a footing until now 2011. Oh. So 2011 is when I begin now to get my first footing. Mm-hmm. So 2011 I was sober. 2012 I was sober and I'm all I'm doing I my I was serving this man of God a, a little back to all this I realized one of the things I lacked most was mentorship Sorry. now remember where I came from my family yeah. was broken so yeah. I met my dad was he uh-huh. was grown yeah. so I never really got mentorship from a father okay. as a man who do a mother so this man of God that I served who became my father he literally became a father to me okay. so he fathered me right. he spoke to me he actually planted the seeds that i call of the things that i t- still pursue today right. you know okay. you know he pursued my love for the nation of kenya you know ministry to the body of christ which yeah. me and my wife that all that came from me serving him right. he's because when he was doing meetings uh, to the body of christ we would travel with him That's right. And so that's how I ended up knowing the church history in Kenya everything. He was really the man that set me on course of purpose which I'm still pursuing right now. Yeah. So we, we from from what you're saying we can say that um your success in ministry as it were came from that period of serving. It actually it serving. actually came from that period because that's when now I got what I want to But do with purpose. When you were serving, you were not serving with the mind that you were going to become a pastor. No. Because there's a thing of I'm serving when is my time up? When when do I get to be free? When do I get to do my own stuff? But you were just serving, you know, just just hanging around the man and serving. I, I was actually serving as his driver. So wow. so and I served as his driver for more than four years. So it it was and at that time you already had the call yeah, yeah because every time a prophet would come in meeting any time I'm the kind that if I walk into a prophetic meeting right now I would be definitely prophesied so any prophet that would come any man that would see I'm the test if I can hear <laughs> right. you know you know yeah, yeah so th- and that's very important because that's something I'm looking at in you know with ministry how were you comfortable serving as a driver to a man for four years and you already knew the call of God was in your life um how how we, how how did you manage that um i think because when growing up there's a principle we were taught we say is there's something that actually god emphasized in my heart big time he said if you can't be faithful with another man's god will never entrust you with your own mm-hmm. so you have to be tested there, there had to be a place of my faithfulness with another's man mm-hmm. another man so For me I can never I know he can never say that I I ever failed in my faithfulness wow. to his work. That's, that's I know I've never served any man of God that can say it matters faithfulness of service. That's right. It matters the work been put on the ground. I never failed. Wow. I did everything and I gave my all. All right. So how did you transition from there into the ministry? How was the transition in like Wow so the transitioning there is another interesting story I think it's it's a it's, so I met a friend of mine I'm going to skip a story there but uh, allow me so I met a friend of mine uh, from from Uganda okay. by this time I was married so I met a friend of mine from Uganda and when I met him apparently it felt like I found the gospel I found the gospel and for the first time I felt like I needed to be born again. 
because then I was like I felt like all I had lived to that time was a lie. Because then I'm like I did understand simple things as salvation. Yeah. Yes, I pursued salvation. I didn't know anything about righteousness. I practically didn't you know it felt like everything I knew was up in the air, nothing yeah. solid. Yeah. So I have to acknowledge him. He's called Benjamin Karsacha. I have to acknowledge him for really teaching me the basics of Christianity. Wow. 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 All right. So um then the Lord spoke to you um how did you get into so what happened is, God spoke to him to start a ministry wow. so we started a ministry he, he was from Uganda so we were living with him so we started a ministry together so we ran that meeting to around 2016 um, I had some personal challenges inter- involved with uh, my, my family yeah. and at that particular time so that transition I had to be out of ministry until now 2017 when I met my next mentor who was called um Dr. Shay. So what happened is my, uh, at that particular time I had two options of going to Bible school right. and I knew this was a time to go to Bible school. Right. So you notice I've served I'm now fully servicing I'm in full ministry but I felt I needed to grow into doc, in, in in the word I needed to grow also in matters what God has called me to. And so I saw an advert of Bethel School of Ministry yeah. online and then I applied and then she took me in. Yeah. So that's how now I get into ministry and and get trained by Bethel and now begin to pastor uh Bethel Atlanta uh Kenya and become the resident pastor. So, so see the transformation God moved you from right on the streets. Yes. Desperate crying of God to save you or kill you to now pastoring. How did you deal with people knowing that this was who you were a couple of months ago and now fast forward you are now pastoring how do you deal with that how does how will a young man who is called into ministry you know you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus yes. you're, you're establishing those foundation but how do you deal with how were you able to deal with it was it a challenge for you um, people who knew you I couldn't even believe that you will be born again not to talk of becoming a pastor. How do you deal with that in ministry? Wow. If you're coming from the streets, how how do you how do you minister in confidence knowing that hey, I'm born again. Remember, you know the foundations of righteousness. Yes. But how do you practically work on that in reaching out to people? I think my my transformation came when God told me uh, a story about Paul. He says, "Remember Paul is standing and says, forgetting the former things." Mm-hmm. Yeah, moving on to the you know. So, and God told me, "Have you ever asked yourself?" This was now God speaking to me. It was a conversation. Have you ever asked yourself that Paul was telling who he was telling maybe forgetting the former thing? Could it be that someone he had killed the uncle, the auntie, the brother was there listening? Yeah. listening to him saying forgetting the former thing yeah. pressing on to the mark of the high calling or even preaching this gospel and telling them forget which means if he was saying that Paul says he's forgetting it means that Paul had to get to the place where if he was going to preach to these people mm-hmm. maybe he's looking at a person that he killed the brother the father or something he himself had to get to the place where I forget it and I forgive myself and God told me if you are not going to keep this you have to first erase it in your mind right. you have to forget it that's right you are, if you don't for, when the bible says forget behold i'm doing uh, yes. behold i'm doing a new thing when the bible talks about forgetting the former it literally says put that record behind yes. because what people think of me will only affect me if i still have it in my mind that's right that's right what what, what would you say are your strength um, in ministry uh, when i mean your strength is what would you say have given you very strong confidence to do the work and you know lead the fortress assembly uh i think the biggest foundations for me is the love of the father mm-hmm. i think knowing him is a loving father has been that has been the biggest thing mm-hmm. I, i think that has been the source of my confidence the source of knowing that god has called me number two is a prayer life and then a life of the word deeply so right. I'm, i'm i'm a man of the word I, i do a lot of words so 
once have I knew that he loves me mm-hmm. and he loves me either way and then I got into the word and then I spent a, I spent a lot of time in prayer and the word those things have become my my greatest foundation and my greatest shield in ministry so um in, in looking at the ministry right you so when you came to Nairobi around this region for instance how's your call coming to this region what what, what how how is getting into this region and having to build a local church is like how do you speak to someone who is sent to another region because obviously you didn't grow up from this yeah. area so how do you come into this area how do you get in and build like what you guys are building here wow um so this region is is a very is a, because it's, it's a very interesting region by the time by the way we are coming here the, the idea that you've been told this region is the hardest region is those things are peddled a lot. Like if you if you make it in ministry there, you're truly called. I don't know why people say that. But I feel like we've just kept the basics of Christianity. We've just kept prayer consistently. We just kept the word consistently. And we've just kept going out to evangelize and win souls. I don't feel like it can get deeper than that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and, and, and because people still need the same simple thing and then love people. So, because we, we have outreaches that are loved, centered, yeah. you know, feeding the street kids, just doing the simple things of the gospel, uh, loving on people. If people know they are loved, people will stay in a church. People know they love, they stay in a church. Now, interestingly, you just mentioned feeding the street kids. So, God takes someone from the streets. Mm-hmm. cleans them up, mm-hmm. puts his grace upon them, and in turn use that mm-hmm. to go back and feed the, the street you know, kids. The street kids. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Tell, tell us a little bit more about that. How do you, um, how's that arm of the ministry going? How do you do that? So, uh, it is a vision of my wife, but I'm, I, I, if, uh, and, and so somehow I've, it has really blended with the visions I've had. Yeah. And so definitely now we adopted it fully. So normally what we do is we cook food in our house. Uh, we are currently feeding a hundred street kids. So we'll cook food in our oh, house uh, and we, we feed them every Wednesday. Wow. Every Wednesday. So you're feeding a hundred street kids every, every Wednesday. Wednesday. Every Beautiful. Wednesday. And so we feed them in this region. We feed them in the town that is just next to us here. So we just carry the food, go to them. Because now we've done it over. We're actually in our second year. They know where they we are, you know. They'll just come, we preach to them, speak to them, and then feed them. That's wow. it. Wow. So how do you get, um, how the provision for that works? So let's say someone who's got this vision, yeah. right, given to them by God. Did you start with 100 kids? How? No, okay. it, it didn't start with 100 kids. It started with a few. So it has grown over so time. So how do you get the funding for it? Is it part of your church? Or do you have partners for it? Or how, how, how has that been resourced? How has that been funded? The Gracewell, which my wife started, the yeah. interdenominational yeah. ministry, is the one that funds uh, yeah. street feeding program. So we also have a strong uh, feeding program, even that really came out of COVID. Yeah. Now feeding, um, even fam- most families didn't have food during that time. Yeah. So we really fed people. So, because we always want to build ministry as a community. Yeah. So, now, we started by feeding the people in in the grace well. Mm-hmm. So, during COVID, what used to happen is we'd load food in the car and take it, you know, to different homes and everything. But then now, what has happened is now, even though at times it happens, we feed some families here and there. Uh, we also now feed the street kids from now the grace well. So the partners in the grace well, other than just doing the prayer meeting, yeah. they will give money to that. Every, so when we need money, we just ask the partners to support. To so, support. so we and then at times we have people saying people bringing food stuff. So yeah. God has given us very faithful partners. Yeah. yeah. What's the what 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 are what are some of the books? that have shaped your ministry what, what books what books would have shaped your ministry wow uh, definitely good morning holy spirit was a big book for me mm-hmm. biography i think uh, a biography by lester samroll story his life um uh, kenneth Hagin books the believer's authority um have to talk about all andrew womack books have been 
all Andrew Max book, Andrew Max audios, all of them have been have been That's big one. for me. Yeah. Like the, I think those are that is one one of the most biggest influences in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I have to say, I've also been influenced by book by Bill Johnson. Uh, I've, I've also been influenced by a lady called. Um, uh, it's it's called Glory Rain, oh. uh, Revival Rain. Also, she has a rain. Uh, R- Ruth Heflin Ward. Okay. Um, I think the first biography I, I I got into was by Maurice Cerullo. Oh. That was big. That was a big book. Warrior. It, it's something about a warrior. I can't remember, but it was that really did a, a number in my life. Uh, uh, let me see. Let me see other book. I think those are the biggest yes, books that I can truly, especially the Lester Summer. Oh yeah, I remember. Uh, there's um, I'm forgetting his name, but I I have really I don't know. Biographies have a way they do a number on me, <laughs> so I love them a lot. I love them them a lot. All right, and and what what would you say very quickly as we wrap up in the next few minutes? What is what would you say is your biggest challenge in ministry? Wow, my greatest challenge in ministry. Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> Come to think of it, that's a big question. I feel like my greatest challenge in ministry, and I think is, I really want to be the. I really want to to. I, I don't know if it's a challenge. I think it's a desire. I really want to give and do the perfect will of the Father for my life. Okay. So the biggest challenge in that phrasing would be like having to know that what you're doing is exactly what God calls you yeah, to do. That, and so that's exactly like that's exactly my greatest prayer. The Lord, you know, I, I'm, I'm, almost, I'm almost asking God, let me know is it, if I'm in the center of his will. Because I've realized in ministry, everything is sold that looks good. You know, everybody is selling their yeah, thing as a stellar. Okay. Everything is good, you know. Yeah. Everybody will sell, listen, yeah. if you preach, the, you know, people say the word is the one that is working. No, yeah. we people of prayer yeah. are the ones that are working. And I realize it's not so much either the word you major. I feel like the main thing is just to do the perfect will of the Father. And I think the other day you said something very interesting. He says, what if, like Jeremiah, you are sent to be rejected, yeah. you know? And so, but you're in the middle of the of God's will. That's why I want. Yeah. All right, so we're just going to pray. Um, should you look at your camera? Yes. Right there. Yes. Uh, we want to pray. Uh, you want to pray specifically for people who um, are in the streets, mm-hmm. people who God is calling with your similar story. Mm-hmm. Just pray the grace of God over them. I would just agree mm-hmm. that God will cause this to be watched by people who will be inspired, you know, and learn from your life and just see the grace of God at work in your life. You've hosted big meetings, you've hosted some of the well-known prophets in, in, in the continent, just by the grace of God, had meetings where thousands have attended. So we're just going to pray, uh, and you're just going to pray over these people. Yeah. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for everyone that is watching. Thank you, Lord, for their lives. Thank you, Lord, for their destiny. Father, I just want to pray for anyone struggling with any addiction, with any oppression of the enemy. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Let them be set free right now in the name of Jesus. I break addiction from pornography. I break addiction from immorality. I break addiction from alcohol and substance abuse. And Father, I just decree in Jesus' name that as have been watching this and, and as you see, set me free. I just decree, Lord, set them free. Give them redemption. Give them liberty. Let them know that you love them. Let them know the power that sets men free from the bondage of darkness in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord, begin to give them an assurance of your purpose over their lives. Begin to give them an assurance of your destiny upon their lives in the name of Jesus. Cause them to walk into their purpose right now. Those that are feeling hopeless because of their struggles. Father, I pray let hope arise in their hearts again. Let hope arise in their hearts again that I may be able to wake up and walk towards purpose and destiny in the name of Jesus. 
Amen and amen. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Dear Timothy Ministry Stories. We trust God that you've been inspired by this story. And we know that there are thousands of people all over the world who might be going through the same struggle, but the Lord has actually called them into the ministry. And we pray that the story of Apostle Dennis will not only inspire you, but impact you to know that there are possibilities. I want to encourage you. Um, get us your feedback. You find our address on the screen. Share this with as much people as you can. We we'll believe that the anointing of God is on this episode to cause transformation in the life of everyone who watches. Thank you. Apostle, God bless you and thank you for coming.